Breaking news here into CBS Sports HQ. Bob Huggins has resigned as West Virginia head coach after 15 seasons. Our CBS Sports insider Matt Norlander confirming that news. Uh, Huggins was arrested on Friday night in Pittsburgh and charged with a DUI. The incident comes after he uttered a homophobic slur during a radio interview uh, in May in Cincinnati and received the $1 million salary reduction. He leaves the Mountaineers as the second most winning as coach with 345 wins and third all time with 935 career coaching wins. Well, let's bring in CBS Sports College basketball writer our Matt Norlander. Uh, Matt, let's get your reaction here to Bob Huggins here. Of course, uh, the 935 wins, the most active among college basketball coaches. We expect that maybe he would be fired or maybe resigned, but we're expecting it to happen this soon, especially after this incident and the DUI arrest in Pittsburgh on Friday night. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the college basketball world has been buzzing uh, for the entire day. The the news of this uh, broke earlier on Saturday morning. Word of it really started to get around pretty early on the East Coast on, on Saturday because Huggins was arrested at 8.30 on Friday in Pittsburgh. And the details of that arrest uh, are laid out uh, in a couple of stories at CBSSports.com, but obviously very disturbing in nature. And because of that, not just the DUI, um, but if you really look into how he was arrested, I mean, Huggins had empty beer cans uh, on the floor and a garbage bag in his passenger side. There were more bottles in his trunk. There was a cooler that the officer on the scene um, reported that appeared to have been recently used. This is the second DUI of, his, of Huggins' career. He had one in 2004 when he was coaching at Cincinnati, and that incident, among other things, led to his resignation in 2005 from Cincinnati. And then, of course, Bob Huggins got himself in extremely hot water earlier this spring when he made homophobic remarks on the radio and disparaging remarks against Catholics on Cincinnati radio. That landed him a three-game suspension, uh, mandatory counseling, and a uh, complete change in his contract. That is all moot now because, yes, yeah, sources indicated to me on Saturday night Huggins has met with his team, told them that he will not be coaching them, and I'm told that he intends to resign and that also uh, a retirement is in, the, is in the works here as well. Uh, not surprised by the, the, the swiftness of this. There was no other choice other than to be fired, but Huggins has is, is been given runway here to actually resign under his own volition. It is obviously an end uh, that you know is going down in infamy for Huggins because uh, he's not covering himself in glory. I mean, I, I was told by sources previously that the intention here was maybe uh, one more season than retire in 2024. Uh, he could not even get to uh, you know the start of July before finding himself uh, in another very uh, terrible, uh, troubling situation. And so um, West Virginia moves swiftly on this as it should have. And, uh, and they are parting ways. Uh, Huggins planning to resign from a place that he graduated from. And he is actually, he was born in Morgantown. So he is one of their own. And uh, he did this all to himself, both what we have here and the controversy that uh, he stepped in with his comments on the radio earlier this spring. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Bob Huggins, of course, born in Morgantown, West Virginia, alma mater there uh, at West Virginia. Spent 16 seasons there, informed his team uh, reportedly uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern uh, on Saturday night. Uh, Matt, want to get your thoughts here with the uh, AD, a new AD there, relatively a new AD there with Ren Baker. You talked about the three-game suspension, the reduction in salary. How much did all of this sort of play here? We look at it in pro sports. You know, I got a new GM. You look at it in college sports. You have a new AD, maybe you don't have as much wiggle room there uh, at the university there in West Virginia. How much did that impact uh, the decision here with Bob Huggins? Larry, not that much. It, I, to me, it would not have mattered if it was an AD on his first week on the job or, uh, or an AD that Huggins had, you know, hypothetically been working with for 30 years. Um, to have two incidents back to back uh, at any point in your career, but really within the span of just six weeks, um, left West Virginia with, with no choice. Now, speaking with another Division One coach, earlier in the day on Saturday. And, you know, at the time, you know, we didn't know for sure whether or not Huggins was going to resign or be fired. But uh, it, across basketball right now, it was it was nearly universally accepted that uh, that this was going to be a sever that had to happen. But, you know, Huggins, the active leader, well, no longer, but in Division One wins in, in college basketball, he took that mantle once Mike Krzyzewski and Jim Beheim retired. Uh, but a huge figure within the game, a very huge figure. But... I, I need to speak to Bob Huggins and what I've heard from a few coaches today. Like, he needs to seek help. He needs to get himself right. All right? This is this is not a one-off. Literally his second DUI. And for him to have put himself in this situation is genuinely terrifying to think about when you consider the fact that he was asked by police on the scene Friday night in Pittsburgh where he was. He could not tell them 
the city that he was in. He even guessed Columbus, as in Columbus, Ohio, which is almost a three-hour drive west of where he actually was. He had been to a Burger King seven hours prior and could not tell the police what he had done in between in those seven hours. We're talking about a man whose blood alcohol content was 0 0.210. That is severe enough to put some humans in the hospital. Bob Huggins is extremely lucky that he did not hurt himself or others or potentially kill himself or others. This is an extremely serious situation. There was no choice but this. And so now we have to hope that Huggins, because of this, can actually level himself, seek whatever help and treatment he may need to better his life and not put himself or anyone in this kind of position again. West Virginia had no choice. He is resigning, and in all likelihood, with the retirement, I'm told, that's looming, has coached his final game. You know, you talked about that BAC there in uh, Pittsburgh on Friday night, a .21 on that. That's uh, about two and a half times uh, the legal limit there, which is a point uh, zero eight. You talked about uh, West Virginia. What are the uh, chances here that they – who are they going to hire? What's, let's, let's spin this forward here, uh, Matt. What are the options here for West Virginia? Who would be a good candidate? Any names that you're hearing? I know this is early with this news breaking here with Bob Huggins. Uh, what is uh, West Virginia looking at here at the Mountaineers uh, to bring someone in in uh, Morgantown? Yeah, so the new AD is Ren Baker. He's been there for a year, and my understanding is that Ren Baker was going to kind of slow roll. His, his, his plan was that Huggins would retire probably in 2024, and with that, be able to slow roll and, and bring in someone new. Now that all blows up here. Now, you do have Ron Everhart on the staff at West Virginia. He is a former head coach who's coached many years at the Division One level. They could maintain him and help him in an interim case. West Virginia, from an on-the-court perspective, has a roster that had one of the best transfer classes this season. Don't quite know if WVU, with the roster that currently is constructed, is quite top 25 material, but conceivably could be. So do you keep Everhart on staff? and try and retain all the players there. Um, don't really know what other coaches in Division One right now would be uh, ideal candidates. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's an alum who is mm -hmm. just fine in his current position right now, um, where if West Virginia opted to keep the interim situation, Joe Mazzula played for Huggins at West Virginia. He's coaching the Celtics. Obviously, he is not going to leave an NBA franchise, so <laughs> you would not think to coast West Virginia, but if they keep Everhart and it goes just okay, and Missoula has a just okay second go of it in Boston, maybe that's a potential head coaching option some months down the road. Uh, we'll see. West Virginia is an intriguing job. Uh, it's in the Big 12. Uh, it's somewhat geographically isolated, although it changes a little bit with Cincinnati joining the league, but it is not considered a top half of the league job by any means. Uh, Huggins, uh, for a long time, was a really good fit there, Larry, because he was an alum. He was a native. His persona kind of fit the ethos there. And so now moving forward, we wait and see uh, what West Virginia will decide to do. In the short term, it's going to be ever, I would have to believe it's going to be Everhart on an interim basis. The question is, will he hold that post for the entirety of the season ahead? Or they, or will Ren Baker and the president, Gordon Gee, actually conduct a full national search and try and, and hire someone in the next one or two weeks as we sit on the precipice of the ever critical July recruiting period. Yeah, and of course, college basketball starts in the next uh, four months or so uh, in West Virginia. A team that went to the NCAA tournament, Bob Huggins took them to the NCAA tournament 11 times in 16 years, uh, five uh, Sweet 16s, uh, and one Final Four. But he is out, 69 years of age, uh, resigning here uh, at West Virginia University. He's Matt Norlander, our CBS Sports College basketball uh, writer. Matt, we really appreciate that. And you can, of course, catch Matt Norlander and Gary Parrish. I on College Basketball Podcast, the most entertaining and informative of its kind. GP and our Norlander bringing the sport into your ears three times a week with commentary, reporting, inside information, and statistical analysis throughout the college basketball season all year long. Catch the Ion College Basketball Pod wherever you get your podcast.